All right, so I have my, my snake head drawn, but now I'm modifying some of these anchor points. And if I double click on the anchor point, it will turn it from a curve to a straight. And if I want to add an anchor point, I just click on the line and I can do that. And then I can modify those curves as well. And then when I have straights on both sides or on one side, I can also use cornering tools like this, but that might mess up your curve on the other side. So there's just a lot to it. And remember, you can always move the placement of your anchor points too. All right. So I think that shape looks pretty good. Once I'm happy with it, or I might... Uh, I might round this one out a little bit. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so once you're happy with it, you should lock it. But before you lock it, you can switch it to be filled in and turned off on the border. Now, do you guys see what the problem is? If I fill this in with, with black, what do I lose that was part of my logo? The eye, right? So if I want to know where to place the eye, I'm just going to take that path and take the opacity down a little bit, just temporarily. And then instead of trying to draw a perfect circle, I'm going to use the shape tools, use the circle, start drawing one, uh, don't hold down shift in this program and it will be perfectly strong and symmetrical. Place it where I want it and now I'm going to fill that with white just so I can see where it is. Now this is going to be important so I want everyone to pay attention no matter where you are in your process. Whether you're using Illustrator or using Vector.com to make your shapes Every once in a while, you need to cut shapes out of other shapes. Because right now, if you look at my layers, I have my sketch, and then I have a black shape vector, and then I have a white shape circle. But if that's my vector, then my vector isn't just black shapes, right? So I need to cut that white circle out of the black once I get it to the right size. So I'm going to shrink it a little bit. I think I want it right there. So how do I do it? I have to select. It's easiest to do it one at a time. I have to select the path that I want to cut out, which is the circle. Hold down shift and select also the path that I want to cut it out from. So you can see both of those paths are selected. It will then give me these options at the top. These are for transforming, like flipping changing the order, but then these ones are unique for when you have overlapping paths. In Illustrator, this is called the Pathfinder. And what I want to do is I want to subtract the front from the back. So it's this one. When I do that, it doesn't look any different, but what it did was it put this all as one path. So if I double click it, you can see that I've got a cutout within this shape. And so that's a more complex path. And that's good enough to lock. Turn my sketch back on, continue on to the next. Now, I've kind of bad mouthed the pencil tool, right? <laughs> and it's my favorite tool in Adobe Illustrator, but in this, it's not great for clean logos because it just makes so many anchor points. So for instance, if I make a path with it, and I make sure to close it up. It just makes so, so many anchor points. 
It's called a freehand path, right? So the problem with that is it's really no better than just drawing it with pixels because it has so many stair steps. So that's why I don't like the pencil tool. And there's no way that I know of to modify it or to make it so it doesn't plot so many points. So instead, you really do want to come to peace with the pen tool. So how do we do it? Everything is doable with the pen tool. I'm going to drag this off so I get a little bit more working space. So remember, you can always do Command-Z, but you start somewhere with the pen tool. And you click, and then you drag if you want a curve, or you just click and point and click if you want straights. But then once you've done your curve, you're going to see how it limits what your next curve can do. And you could just follow that. Like in this case, I'll just use it because it's pretty close. And then I've finished the curve, and now it's a straight. But if I want that to be a curve, then I need to click and drag. And now, that's not really the curve I want. There's really no way to make that the curve I want. So what do I need to do? I need to hold down Command, click on the handle, and this allows that handle to be different and to go all the way back to my anchor point, which then allows me to plot a new curve. And then hold down Command, click on the handle of the leading edge, allows me to click a new curve. And I want them to be clean. But the only way you can get into trouble here is if you don't finish your path. So you got to be kind of methodical. You can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to move along with your progress. And it's okay to plot more curves than you think you actually need. But you just got to keep going. And remember, they can be moved and modified after, but you've got to close that path first. And this is a big, complicated shape. So I've got a lot to draw before I can modify. And this is true of Adobe Illustrator 2. So much of a vector program is based on precise clicking, which is why it's actually designed for the, the mouse more than for a tablet. The first vector programs were invented well before there was any other interface besides just a mouse for your computer, before trackpads or anything else. But once you get the hang of it, you can create any two-dimensional shape just with this pen tool with a minimum number of anchor points. And you can use it to improve your sketch. or at least make strong decisions, right? The thing can be changed. Now, this is a good instance. I'm going into this curve. Instead of setting that back, it might be better than my sketch if I stick to the same curve. But if I set it all the way back, that leading edge, then I can create exactly my own curve. But sometimes the curve it gives you might be an interesting choice, right? I'm just really picky. When it's like a perfect half circle, you would think you could do that with one curve, but you really can't. So you can do Command Z to go back and you can shorten your curve. And it can help bring you around.
Now this is what the pen tool is great at, just straights. And really balanced curves. Not sure why I'm going so wide with this, but I'm just going to try it, and then I can modify it later. Okay, I'm almost closing off the shape. Now, here's the only problem with my method of always pulling back. I can't do that when I close the loop. When I close the loop, I don't get to change those anchor points. So I always go just short of closing the loop, and then just use a straight to close it up. Okay, now it's time to modify these. How do I modify it? Just double click. And you'll see your anchor points. And then I can start moving them around. I can tighten it up. I can get closer to what I want. I can even just overlap them on each other so they don't impact each other like I do at the loop. And if I click on the anchor point itself and hold down Command, which I didn't do, then I can modify the curves on each side and really fine-tune it. So I recommend that, holding down Command and fine-tuning your curves on each side. This is a weird area here. That I'm going to want to play with. And it's really this curve. I need it to be so, so subtle. I might need to move the anchor point a little bit to accomplish what I want. And this is a case where, oh man, it's tricky. So I have a curve on this side, and then I want it to curve back. So I'm actually going to add an anchor point. And pull it down. And adjust that. And it can get really complicated. I can also click on the anchor point and then just delete it. If I don't think I need it. All right. I'm going to see how that looks. How? I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to fill it with black. Always just use the default black here so it's 100%. Then I'm going to turn off the stroke. And then I'm going to turn off my sketch. See how that looks so far. Actually, it looks pretty good. I'm kind of wondering if I'm doing more than I need to do. Like if this kind of says feathered serpent shedding its skin without needing all of this. Because this is a logo, not a tattoo, right? So I don't really need it to wrap around and 